My name is Lane Cordoma, I'm Assistant Chief of Interpretation here at Mount Rushmore National Memorial. I've been here for 21 years now. I am also in charge of the preservation of Mount Rushmore and the rope access team. The three things that we're going to look at today as we look at the sculpture closely, one of them is the tool marks left behind within the carving process. Detailed from the beginning of the carving to the end, you'll be able to see the remnants within the tool marks left behind of the carving era. The second thing we're going to look at today is where we monitor the sculpture today and why. We'll look at some of the rock blocks within the sculpture and what we do to keep track of them. The third is that we're going to look at the unfinished places on Mount Rushmore, the locations where the workers and Borgham could have done more and potentially the reason why they didn't. One of the first locations to talk about the carving process left over in the tool marks on the face of the sculpture is on Washington's coat. Washington's coat, you can zoom in and see the vertical tool marks and the locations where there are horizontal marks across the face of the sculpture on Washington's coat. If you look directly below Jefferson's um, chin and to Washington's left, there is some opportunity to see some wedging there. Simply wedging is a place where they created vertical tool marks side by side and then wedged a, um, whether it be another wedge drill or a piece of wood and hammered it in there to wedge off sections of rock. Honeycombing can be found within areas that were left rough on purpose. The places that were the finished portions of Mount Rushmore, like the faces, were left rough on purpose so that the light coming from the sun is reflected with inside that location on the surface of the granite, like the beard of Lincoln or the mustache of Roosevelt. Guts and Borgham recognized that this would be an opportunity to create a, um, a world-renowned sculpture. The rock that he chose, named Mount Rushmore back in the 1880s, had many flaws in it. Some of these flaws are cracks. The cracks that he had to deal with during the carving era now exhibit themselves within the finished sculpture. Some of these cracks combine together to form at least surface rock blocks. All of these rock blocks, each of them have three monitors on each rock block. So if that particular rock block would move in any direction, it will be recognized. Another location where Borgholm and the workers were, weren't able to finish uh, to the original idea of Mount Rushmore, and that's of course Lincoln's left hand. Many people, as they view the sculpture from the, from the Grandview Terrace or even up underneath the sculpture, don't realize there's actually three knuckles of his left hand are there. The final spot, zoom all the way out. Look at the sculpture from the front. The darker band of gray below Washington's chest is a different type of rock entirely. It's a rock called mica schist. It's a metamorphic rock. Mica schist cannot be carved. 